Hi, I'm Lance Culver, and this is going to be a beginner's level tie flow for 3D Studio Max tutorial. In the previous video, tie flow simulation retimer was used to create a UVW projection of a two dimensional image onto thousands of particles. If you haven't had time to watch that video, I'd recommend that you take a moment and recreate that simulation. There are a lot of interesting elements to it. This tutorial will use retimer and scene geometry to identify specific particles in order to create this effect. Go to Create, Standard Primitives, Box. Do three height segments. Go to the Modify tab. Make it an editable poly. Select Vertex. Okay, I have a camera set up here. So you just want the edges of your, your box to cover your screen. Select Polygon, click this top one, delete it, click on the modifier list, go down to Shell, just add a little depth to this, okay, go to the Create tab, over to the Helpers icon, click on this drop down, select Tie Flow, Tie Icon, okay, adjust your Tie Icon. So that it fits within the box. Select Geometry, Tie Flow. Before you get started here, you can go down to Physics. If you have a CUDA capable GPU, it will likely help improve the performance of this simulation. You can also increase the sub steps to 10. Open Editor birth operator. Let's go ahead. I want to change the length of this to 220 frames. I want to end on 200 frames. 2500 particles. The position icon. Pick the icon. Shape operator. Select 3D. Low res geosphere. Turn on the scale and change the display to geometry. Increase the scale value, decrease variation to 0%. Speed operator. Change the direction to a long icon arrow. Pick the icon. Drag out physics shape and Physics Collision. Under Colliders, pick the box and change the hole type to Mesh. Okay, you can test the simulation. Under Physics Shape, under Dynamics, we could reduce the static friction 0.05 and the dynamic friction to 0 0.05. So I increase the particle count to let's say 7,500. Create tab. Go to Standard Primitives, go down to Text Plus. Increase the size here a little bit. Maybe separate them some. Go to Extrude. Is that we can turn on Bold?
can adjust this whichever way you think is best. Okay, let's click on new. You can turn off tie flow one. Go to birth flow. Select tie flow one as the source flow. Want to uncheck mapping under channels. You can drag out flow update. Again, select tie flow one. Under channels, uncheck mapping and uncheck shape. Use a surface test. Pick the text. Shut that off. And we will say if it is say five centimeters. Try got a physics shape into a new event and a physics collision. Pick the box. Change the hole type to mesh. Connect it to the surface test. Select flow update, hold shift and drag it over. So copy this event, paste it next to it. Drop in a send out operator into the first event. Connect the new event to the send out. Select tie flow one. Scroll down and enable tie flow retimer. Set auto key. Type frame 220. Select that frame, drag it over to zero. Now here type zero and refresh the simulation. Okay, if we go back to the beginning, under surface test, check zero distance if inside volume. Okay, select tie flow two. Check enable simulation retimer. Enable auto key, type 220 under frame, and set that keyframe. Click the set keyframe button, move over a frame or two, set keyframe zero, drag this frame over to 220. Open the material editor. All you need to do is create a multi sub object. Let's just say we'll have five materials. Select type flow two, apply the material. Drag out a material ID for each of these events. And swap these two. Okay, so for and this. So under here we would say random. Minimum four, maximum five. And then under this one, we say random one through three. Okay, I realize this might be a little bit confusing about the way this is working. If you're new to TyFlow, the way this technique works is you created TyFlow one, which is the base simulation. 
and then enable tie flow simulation retimer, which reverses the simulation. You then created a new flow with a birth flow operator, which creates a copy of the source flow, which was tie flow one. Since it's had retimer enabled, you're starting your new flow out at the very last frame, and you know where all the particles will be when they stop moving. You then use a surface test to separate those particles from the other particles so you can apply material IDs to them. You then enable tie flow retimer on tie flow two so that it plays in the correct sequence. Well, hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If there was any part of this that you didn't understand or that you're having trouble with, feel free to drop a comment below. As always, I hope you have a great day, and we will see you next time. Thanks again. Thank you.